Hey, how's it going? It's Jim from Corbin Sound here with Ableton Quick Tip number 8. Places. Places are located on the lower left-hand side of Ableton's browser sidebar. From here you have some obvious folders which we have come across before, like packs, which will show you all of your downloaded and available content from Ableton's official store. Below that is User Library, which is where any presets you save are stored for future use. To demonstrate this, I have an inactive echo audio effect on this drum loop here in the session view. I've edited this echo to create a gated echo sound that I quite like on this loop. Let's turn that on. And before. And after. I might want to record the specific settings on this effect when working on another project in the near future, so I'll go ahead and rename it something obvious. And then I'll hit this little floppy disk icon in the right hand corner. You'll see the user library spring open and show the file directory of this new preset that we just made. If we want to switch the preset sound quickly to something else that we've made, we can use the hot swap feature, which will open up the user library once again as it will be looking for another user generated preset. We don't have any more user presets at the moment, as we're only showing our one that we've just made but you can always head back to Ableton's audio effects and grab one from their factory presets library. And there we go. It's changed out through the hot swap feature. And we'll confirm that by exiting. There are user preset folders for just about any content type in Ableton and well worth a look at in your own time. Underneath user library is arguably one of the most useful folders in Ableton, current project. From here you can drag in clips and whole sections from another project's arrangement and session view into the one you are working on currently. You also have the ability to open and drag content from the last 10 times you save a particular project from the backup folder on the top here. On the phase project I created for Ableton Quick Tip number five, you can clearly see the date and timestamps from when I saved it. You'll also see that from these timestamps, when I first started the project, some of these tracks are named differently from different times. This is when I started progressing through the project and started doing a bit of housekeeping essentially. You can see how this works if I go to the arrangement view and I drag something in from my fades demo project. Let's do the beat. You can see it lines up with the original project's location for the beat. I had it set at the beginning of bar 33 all the way up to the end of bar 48. This can be really helpful if you're looking to transfer different MIDI regions or even audio files like we've just done here into a new project for consistency or for resampling or anything that you can think of creatively. To demonstrate how I've been storing my projects, just going to fold all this up, go to backups, fold that up, and you can see I've got these five demo projects as soon as I hit current project. If I bring my finder window up here, you can see from a main folder that I have for Corbin Sound, I have some YouTube project folders here, and inside that, my main YouTube demo projects, and from inside here, every single one that you see corresponding to this side area here will be the projects I have inside of my hard drive stored under this main YouTube demo projects. And the one that we're working on is here, Places Demo Project. And finally, underneath Current Project, you can see there's a number of different folders. These have all been added clicking the Add Folder feature. What I like to do with these folders is find areas where I'll be looking for samples or things that I've found from the many years I've been producing and having them all stored in one easy to search through area. So let's maybe look at something in this one that says sample catalog. 
You can see there's a number of different folders, all of which I've done a little bit of housekeeping to keep them into place. Uh, something like this stimming kit sample that I downloaded uh, quite a few years ago. Got claps, closed hits, kicks. And from up here in the search menu, we can also just scroll through and find specific samples. So if I type in kick up here, now from my sample catalog, which you can see highlighted in this golden, golden yellow color, I can then go and hunt through and find all the kicks underneath each folder. Let's turn that up a little bit. Find some from this Legavelt sample pack that I downloaded a few years ago. And some Matthias Friedel ones. And to remove this search feature, I just have to go up to the top here, click the little X, and there we have it. We can then start searching for other samples. To get Ableton to bring up these particular folders or any that you might have and want to quickly have access to from inside of Ableton's browser, just click the Add Folder button. And from here, you see it's going to the last place that we looked at on our folder directory which was the YouTube demo projects, but we can go back to somewhere like our desktop where we might have all our samples stored in an easy to find place and go from there. Our sample catalog, the same one that we've just opened. And then you click open and it'll be there once you've clicked open. And that's it. If you've liked today's video, be sure to click like, subscribe, hit the notification bell to know when the next video drops. And thank you for watching. We'll see you soon. Take care.